2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. I'm going to talk to you this morning about the power of your influence. I know this being Mother's Day, I will mention some things in my sermon, of course, concerning mothers. But there's a lot more to this message that I really want to share with you that kind of branches out into the areas of all our lives. How many of you know this morning your life is an influence to somebody right now? Every single one of us? Young people, your life is an influence to others. The Word has a lot to say about that. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. I thank God, whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that, my, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith. I want you to keep that in mind. He had a sincere faith. And it first lived in his grandmother Lois, and in his mother Eunice. And he says, I am persuaded... This sincere faith now lives in you also. Father, thank you for the word to our hearts this morning. I pray in these next few minutes the Holy Spirit would quicken our hearts to your word. Father, may our lives be challenged by the Spirit of God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Paul remarks here in these verses about a sincere faith. A sincere faith that is lived out in the life of Timothy. He recalls his tears. There was a brokenness in the life of Timothy, a new convert to Christ. A brokenness there, a love and a devotion to God. And as Paul is at other places and thinking about Timothy, he is moved with thanks. He's stirred. He realizes that Paul has started out living his life for the Lord and is going to have a great impact on many, many people. Paul has an expression of thanks here. Now, now listen, sincere. When you think about sincere, because we're talking sincere faith. Sincere means without deceit. How many would agree today that we're living in a climate today of lots of deceit? We wonder if Things are being told truthfully. Now, that's been going on for the ages. Uh, but we, we sense that, don't we, in our spirit? We want people to be truthful. Sincere is genuine. Something that is heartfelt. Something that we do with our whole heart. This morning, it's important for us to have a sincere faith. Paul acknowledges the fact that this kind of faith that Timothy possesses, a sincere, authentic faith, first had its beginnings in his grandmother and his mother. It was influenced in his life from his very beginning, from infancy. And so this morning I draw our attention to the fact of the power of influence. Influence. Today we draw our attention, yes, to mothers. But it speaks to all of us. And I want you to consider your influence. Those that you meet from day to day. Tomorrow when you go to work, you're having an influence on your co-workers. Are they seeing Jesus in you? The things that you say, the attitude of your heart. Uh, to all of our students, whether it's in high school or college or junior high, wherever it is, you are being an influence on others. Jesus said you're to be the salt and the light to this world. We all would agree this morning that it's really important that influence starts right in the home. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about in the home on this Mother's Day. I want to make a few observations about, first of all, about the teaching of mothers. How many of you had some mothers that taught in your life, taught you some things, right? See, and I came across this. See if your mother taught you a few of these things. Are you ready? Did your mother teach you foresight? Make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. Did she teach you foresight? Did she teach you logic? Logic. If you fall out of the tree and break your neck, don't come crying to me. 
There's some logic for you. How about maturity? Did your mom teach you maturity? Eat your vegetables or you'll never grow up. <laughs> How about did your parents or your mom teach you about religion? You better pray that comes out of the carpet. Uh-huh. Did your parents or your mom teach you about travel? If you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. <laughs> You guys all know these are true because you've heard them. You know, I'm just bringing them back to you, aren't I? Come on, come on. Did you, <laughs> were you taught about contradiction, contradictions? Shut your mouth and eat your dinner. <laughs> How about contortionism? Will you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? <laughs> Perseverance. You're going to sit here until you eat your every last piece of broccoli. <laughs> oh, what about this one? Your genetics. Genetics. You're just like your father. <laughs> How about weather? Did your mom or your parents teach you about weather? It looks like a tornado swept through your bedroom. Yep. And one more. Did your parents or your mom teach you about the circle of life? I brought you into the world and I can take you out. You already knew that one. <laughs> oh, we've been taught a lot of things and you've been influenced by your mom, your dad, your grandpa, and your grandma. How many had grandparents make a big impact on your life? Aunts and uncles? Yeah, th th this message is about the power of your influence. I I'm going to make reference to the moms today, of course. It's Mother's Day. But I, I want to speak to all of us. You know, we're going to leave here in just a few minutes. And when we leave, you're walking out there into your world. And people are watching your life. You're making an impact. One way or the other, you're either, you're either drawing people and focusing on Christ and letting people see Jesus in you, or you're living like the world, and we can't do that. It's going to be an, there's going to be an, an impact there. Um, I also, this was interesting, I came across a calculation about mothers. An interesting calculation about mothers. Maybe some of you have heard this. By the time a child reaches 18, a mother has had to handle some eight extra 18,000 hours of child-generated work. For the woman who has never had children to enjoy, the listen, the equivalent is an extra three months a year in leisure time. Think about that. That's kind of wild, isn't it? Moms, you do a lot of work, don't you? A lot of work. Child-generated work. Well, it's about your influence, whether it's your role as a parent, a grandparent, or an aunt, or an uncle, a friend, a classmate, a co-worker. This is all for us today. I want to share with you some responsibilities of being a good influence on other people. And we're specifically focusing on our spiritual life and our walk with the Lord. And the first area we need to have is we need to have a respect for the scriptures and a, and a healthy respect for the scriptures i want to go back to our passage in timothy and take us down further into verses 14 and 15. paul says concerning timothy he says but as for you continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know that those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Let's pause for a moment and consider the children. Children become convinced of the truthfulness of God's Word as we model it out before them. How many know kids are watching us? Young people are watching our lives. It's being modeled out daily in front of them. What about your influence regarding the Word of God? You see, they watch us at how we handle our life, whether it's the children, whether it's our friends, our, our neighbors, our family members. We go through things in life, and we know what difficulties are like, right? How do we stand through that? How do we deal through that? Where do we get our strength? Where do we get our help and, and guidance? Well, we know the Holy Spirit is there for us. Amen? 
I know I can call on the name of Jesus. But I also know that when I call on the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit's help, guess what they do? They point me many times to the Word of God. And then I have a scripture to go with that. And I have a, something that can help me weather the storm of life. It's important. And yes, we speak to mothers today, but we speak to all of us today. How important that they're watching our life when these times come. I will actually ask you this question. Does, whether it's your children or your grandchildren, because grandparents, you can fall into this, aunts and uncles, family. Do others see you ever reading the Word of God? And I'm talking not just about bringing it to church. But I mean, do they actually, have they seen you? Do they, do they see that you have a hunger for the Word of God in your life? This is about modeling it in front of them. Sometimes, something we notice about Timothy, young Timothy was trained in the Word of God, and I just read to you in 14 and 15, from infancy, did you catch that? From infancy, at church, I say, hooray, hurrah, and I will blow the trumpet for nursery workers. See, when they're in the nursery, that's an important step. That's an important stop. That, that's infancy. For our Sunday school teachers, for our Wednesday night ministries, for you in your own home, how important it is, because it starts at the home for every young child, the Word of God. And I recall, I'll just pick on my dad here today. And my dad, when we were growing up in the home, my dad would pray with us at night when we were kids, and he teaches how to sing scriptures. I learned the books of the Bible from my dad singing them to me when he tucked me in bed at night. Remember those days, Dad? And he taught me songs, scripture songs, as he tucked me in bed at night. How many of you think influence goes all the way back then? You know, when I preach the Word of God and I'm able to quote to you scriptures, you know where some of those scriptures started? When I was seven, eight, nine years of age in in vacation Bible school or a Sunday school teacher. You should have seen my badge I had. Man, Dad, you remember that badge? I was so proud. I had this badge that was just hanging with these little medals in them there because I wanted to memorize as much Scripture as I can. I wanted to fill that thing up. I was motivated. But something even more than just memorizing the Scriptures, it was being modeled before me through my parents, my grandparents, my aunts. Oh, my aunts and uncles modeled it before me too. And, and that's what I'm talking about, the power of influence. I'm here today before you because of the prayers of my parents and my grandparents. My aunts and my uncles. I wasn't no perfect child. My dad will tell you that. But... From my earliest days, I began to learn the scriptures and they meant something to me in my heart. Then I go off to Bible college and man, then I'm get inundated with it all the time. And I'm like, oh, I know where I got that learned from. I got that learned from my dad, my mom. They taught that to me back in the home. So when I'm walking into those college Bible classes, I already have an advantage because I was trained in it from infancy. I know this from my parents telling me this. Man, from the day I was born, I was brought to church yeah. within a week. Yeah. That's all I've ever known is church. <laughs> I've fallen asleep in church. <laughs> I've drawn in church. <laughs> right? My, my brother, uh, my youngest brother, uh, when I came back from Bible college and I was preaching at, at a church and that we were a part of as a family, he would, he would draw the message out in art. As I was preaching, he, he, would, he would put it into art form, and then he would show me, and every scripture I preached was on that piece of paper, and he did it in the form of artwork. I thought that was pretty cool, using his little gift for that. It's a big gift, rather. I, I just and, and Can you see this morning in this Mother's Day message, if you want to call it that, I, I am stirred by the power of influence. And, 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 and speaking to moms and grandmas here today, Listen, those words that you speak, those, that life that you live, will make a lasting impact. Now, they might run from it for a time, right? You probably run from things, and you don't want to hear those words of mom or grandma in your ear, or your grandpa or grandma, and you're just like, I don't want to hear that right now. 
but it's there. It's like a resound. It's like a gong at night. You know, it's a, It's right there. I I can remember the prayer of my grandmother. You see, I also believe that you can pray a blessing over your children and over your grandchildren. The last, the last, and Julie and my family know this this, uh, this story. I've shared it with them many a time. But the and Emily, good to see Emily and Luke here today. That's also special, and. Uh, I, I remember the last real conversation, Dad, that I had with Grandma Serbrook. I walk into the kitchen, and there's my grandma, a dear saint of God, love Jesus, pray. I, I actually have heard my grandma pray in the old cabins at the camp meeting. I could hear Grandma praying up through the floor, up into the upper part of the cab, cabin, and I could hear both Grandpa and Grandma praying. But... I remember when I walked through the door, and here I am, this single guy in his 20s. Single guy in his 20s, out of Bible college, no wife, right? No prospects at that time. And, and I walk into that room, and, and she's, she's nearing the end of her life. And so she, she was not always, it seemed, there all the time, and she slept a lot. But as, I remember when I walked through the door, she perked up. She was in this rocker, and she perked up. And she spoke blessing over me. She spoke blessing over my wife and my children. And Julie and my kids know this. She spoke a blessing and I, I was just kind of dumbfounded. I'm like, wow. I don't even have a prospect. But I guess I'm going to get married someday. Hallelujah. That's grandma's word. And I'm going to have kids. And, and they're blessed. And I say to my kids, they're blessed. I mean, Grandma, the prayers, the influence is long-lasting. Here I am in the middle of my life, and I can still think back to the words of Grandma or Grandpa and, and sitting in the chair in his early 90s, minister for over 50 years. Dave! What, Grandpa? He always called me David. David, I just learned something new from the Word of God today. And then he had to tell me all about it. You know what I knew about Grandpa and Grandma? I saw them with their Bibles open. I saw from infancy, Scriptures, Word of God was there. They had a respect for the Word of God. And it has done something in my life, as you can see from the words that I share with you today. Listen, at home is where it starts. Be careful that we don't just relegate the, 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 all the time to our children to be taught by Barney or Dora or Elmo or Sesame Street. Come on, they need the Word of God. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 7. You can look up that on your own. But parents back then were told to impress the Word of God upon their children to talk about them when they're sitting at home, when they're walking along the road, and when they're getting up. He even, it even goes on to say, write them on the door frames of your homes, of your homes and of your gates. You know what that would be a good thing to do? How about in your home? Do you have the scriptures anywhere in your home? Uh, maybe there's a plaque on the wall. Maybe there's, there's a picture with a scripture or something that you have within your home. If you do that, you're, you're following with what he said in Deuteronomy. Uh, be reminded of it on the door frames of your home and on your gates. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Some of you have that, right? I've been into some of your homes and I've seen that. Now let's go back to the influence of mothers again for, for just a moment. I came across this. Four scholars were arguing about Bible translations. One said he preferred the King James Version because of its beauty and the eloquency in the Old English. Another said he liked the New American Standard Version because of literalism and how it moves the reader from passage to passage with confident feelings of accuracy from the original text. The third scholar was sold on the New Living Translation for its use of contemporary phrases and idioms that capture the meaning of difficult ideas. Now, after being quiet for a moment, the fourth scholar admitted this, and I quote, I have personally preferred my mother's translation. When the other scholars started laughing, he said, 
Yes, she translated the scriptures. My mom translated each page of the Bible into her life. It is the most convincing translation I have ever read. Isn't that powerful? But it goes for all of us. You're the Bible that people are reading every day. You really are. And as you live your life and you go to places of work and, and family and, and the marketplace and, and people are watching you, and you guys all know we, we're just flesh and blood. How many have ever messed up from time to time? I'm raising my hand and I'm thinking, I don't think I was anything, but I didn't look like Jesus in that moment. <laughs> I didn't look like Jesus in that moment. Father, forgive me. You know, but I, I want to I wanna draw people through my life and my influence to Christ. That's a responsibility we all have. Having a respect for the Scriptures. Second area of life is of responsibility for an influence is demonstrating an authentic faith. Demonstrate an authentic faith. As we go back to our text this morning, Paul says, I have been reminded of your sincere faith. In reference to the sincere faith that first started through his grandmother and grandfather or grandmother or mother's influence. They were the real deal. I we like to use that phrase from time to time. Are you the real deal? I mean, you're you, you say you're a follower of Christ and you back it up. I can see it and I know it. You're the real deal. Came across this statement. A child's faith in Christ is not hereditary but learned from those that are closest to them. Your child's faith just doesn't automatically happen because you bring them to church. You're giving them the right influence, the right atmosphere. The kids that just went downstairs for their classes were just in a worship service together, and they were influenced by your worship, by your praise to the Lord. I've been influenced, I remember even as a young person, kneeling at an altar after a Sunday evening service. And I was kneeling at that altar, and there was this dear uh, older saint of God, this lady. She, she, she had been an impact in my life over the years, and I'm kneeling there at the altar after service, and about three, three rows, or three chairs down rather, there she is praying. She's praying in the Holy Spirit. And I was so moved by that moment. You see, I've never forgotten it. I was influenced by her prayers. So church is important for our families, right? We bring them up in the, in, in, in the Word of God and, and among God's people, but, but it has to be something that happens in their own heart. We create an environment whereby others will be motivated to want the same kind of faith that we have. People will look at you, your kids will look at you and say, I want the faith of my mother. I want the faith of my father. I want the faith of my grandparents. I want the faith of my aunt and my uncle. Are you with me this morning? Do you understand that? Amen. Concerning children, parents, think about the environment that you are setting for your children. Grandparents, for your grandchildren. Is there peace in your home? Or is it a place of contention and strife? Do your children and others in your life hear you speak about your personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? With children, it's not just something we, that we bring them to church or send them to summer camp. How many of you have ever been to summer camp? Love summer camp. But it has to start in the home. And I share with you an observation that I've had over the years of ministry most of you know that I, I was a youth pastor for a lot of years. Julie, we were youth pastoring for a lot of years. Matter of fact, I think I got the count was like 12 years. 12 years of youth pastoring. I've watched children and youth come back from camp closer to God and more on fire for God than even their parents in church. You know what they really should happen? They really should come back home finding that their parents already have a greater intensity to serve God. Sometimes the kids come back and they're outshining their parents. And then it's like, you know what I've wanted to do, Julie, is when the kids come back from camp, ship all the parents to camp. 
<laughs> it's like, okay, they the kids are coming back and they're all on fire and they're, you know, they're ready to serve the Lord. And, and I'm thinking, come on, parents. And so I've seen that and I've noticed that. It, it's not just about raising good kids. It's about seeing your children and youth find their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We all want good kids, good grandkids. But what we really want to see is them serving Jesus. Amen. And I know from talking to you guys, talking to families and friends here, we're all, you're all praying for family. You're praying for your kids. You're praying for your grandkids. And you've set the example. You've, you've been the influence. And you continue to be the influence. I believe someone told me the other day, they says, they're standing on the word of God as for me and my household. I'm praying and claiming all of my family into the kingdom of God. Don't you quit. Don't cease in praying. Amen. Too many stories that I don't have time for today of that parents had been praying for years and their adult children finally getting to the place of surrendering their life to Jesus Christ and they'll attribute it to the prayers of their parents, their grandparents. But I'm talking about an authentic faith, a sincere faith. A pastor had a long conversation with someone about becoming a member of his church. We just had that a few weeks ago. When he was done, the young man said he was ready to join. The pastor was curious, so he asked him, what did I say that convinced you to join the church as a member? The man answered, well, it wasn't anything you had to say. <laughs> it was the way my mother lived, end quote. Children, are you ready for this shocker? You ready for a shocker? Children imitate their parents. How about this? Children repeat their parents. <laughs> and in places you wish they wouldn't. And we learn a lot about you from your children. <laughs> Did you say we? Julie and I, over the years, we were children's pastors for a while, too. We learned an awful lot about parents and grandparents by what the kids were saying. They just let it out. They just, there's no filter. <laughs> so just be careful, okay? You're living it out in front of them. The conversation you have about others, about how you live your life and what bothers you. Come on, have you ever shared in your home what bothers you? We all have. This bothers me. We're just, we just air it all out. Uh, just, just keep that in mind in your influence. Um, now, we're going to pick up things from our parents, like our mannerism, mannerisms. I got some of my dad's mannerisms. Uh, I picked them up from him. No fault of his own. He just lived his life. And I thought, hey, you know, how many of you know you do things you just didn't know that was from your parents? It's just that's who you are. Um, but we also pick up some of their attitude. Can you, can you pick up the attitude of your mom, your dad, or your grandparents, those around? It kind of rubs off on you. And so you're got, you have to be responsible with what you do with that as you get older, of course. But we're concerned about raising them spiritually, are we not? We're concerned and we're more interested in their souls than their bodies or their clothes. Some parents are so focused on the latest of clothes but where their souls are at with Jesus is a secondary matter. I'm more concerned, and you should be more concerned about their spiritual life than their so-called success in life. As we mentioned before, we're concerned about the relationship with Jesus more than how popular they are in their school or in their world. We're more concerned and interested in their standing with God than in their social status. And we're more concerned about them spiritually than we are intellectually, musically, or athletically. And I'm all for those three. But sometimes they take precedence, unfortunately, over the spiritual part of the life. And that's a tragedy. It is. And finally, the third area of responsibility we have as a person of influence is we must pour our life into others, a life of serving Jesus. As we have noticed, as we notice rather from Timothy, he had a wonderful, great example in his life of a grandmother and a mother. Now each of us 
We're leading by our example, by how we live and how we serve. That's another part of the influence of a follower of Christ as a parent, as a grandparent. Here's what we've learned, what we see from the scriptures about Timothy. He had, that he had a direct connection to those with the greatest influence of his life. So here's what happened. He became a strong follower of Jesus Christ, just like those who influenced him. He modeled the disciplines of those like his grandmother and his mother. I want to say to our young people, our young adults that are present here today, take note of others who have poured into your life and set the example for you. Take note of that today. You can be the same to your friends and the same to your peers because of their example and how they've done that and poured that into your life. The Bible actually says, let the older teach the younger, right? Timothy had a great reputation. Others spoke well of him. I mean, you know, your name is far more worthy and, uh, than gold or silver to have a good name. It's, it's worth more than that. Others spoke well of him as a person of integrity, as a, a man of the Word of God. I mean, when Timothy would speak, he'd have a scripture. When you speak, do you have a scripture in mind that comes to your forefront when you're dealing with things in life? That's how he had a great reputation. He wasn't self-centered. He didn't look for handouts. He was a hard worker. He was well-respected. How are you on your job? Do you have a great reputation? I hope so. Even in the worst of situations, you can. Look at that young fellow by the name of Joseph. And he had a lot of things that were against him. And yet he rose up, didn't he? In places of authority because he had a great reputation. He was a young man of his word. And he had a faith in God. The thing we know about Timothy is he was available to serve other people. We find in the scriptures when we read about Timothy that there was an eagerness to minister to others. He was willing to leave his home as Paul's coming through. And Timothy receives Christ. Timothy goes with Paul. Bye, Mom. Bye, family. Bye, friends. You know what? I may never see you again. He didn't know what life had for him. But something was stirring in his heart that had its earliest beginnings from infancy. The Spirit of God was upon him. Church, listen, we dedicate kids around here. Did you know that? We dedicate babies. We dedicate kids. We give them to the Lord from their earliest age. We bless them. We pray over them. We guard them as they grow up and become adults. Then I have them stand up here on the platform and have them tell about graduating from high school. I don't know how many now. I'm getting older here, Pastor Berger. There's just been a huge number. If I go right through the list, I'm like, man, there's been a lot. Many of them growing up in this congregation. Now ready, eager to minister, to serve. But leaving home, he did. Yes, Paul, yes, Timothy did. Left all the comforts to go with Paul on his missionary journey. A side note to all of this, to all the parents, grandparents, moms, dads, grandpas, grandmas. Will you with me find ways to involve our children, our grandchildren? Yes, kids can know how to serve. I know I'm going back to stories in my past, but it just kind of fits today. Remember, Dad, the time when you and Mom would pack up the kids and we'd go to the church? And I learned how to clean church with my parents. Dave, go around and get the garbage out of the classrooms. I remember Dad getting the garbage and taking care of the garbage and doing things in the church at a young age. You know what, folks? This is good stuff. I, I'm not hearing a lot of amens on this, but I'm telling you, this is really good. I've tried with my children. Of course, you say, well, they're the pastor's kids. <laughs> you know, with our kids, 
that they're involved, taking down tables and chairs and serving in outreach and ministry and helping out around the church and serving others. This is the power of influence. So let's do that. Well, let's, do, let's just do more of that. Encourage other families to, to get plugged in and do things in ministry together. Complacency or a desire to serve starts in your home. Starts in your home. Talking about the power of your influence today. And we speak to moms today, grandmas today, especially on Mother's Day. And we speak to all of us. Do we have a respect for God's Word? Something in our homes that we hold dear. It's, it's a part of our life. It's, you know, we have our Bibles open and we read and, and, and they know that and we have Scripture available and we talk of the Word of God. Let it start there with us and in our homes. Let it also be a part of the church. You know, the church can kind of stray too. We can get so busy doing things that we forget what the Word of God has to say. You know, the Word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Let's demonstrate authentic faith. Authentic faith. Lord, help us to be real with who we are sincere, without deceit, wholeheartedly saying, God, I'm going to do this with everything and I know my influence will follow me. Your influence will follow you. I still hear stories of all the years and I'll bump into people I haven't seen in years and now they're kids and they're grown and they're having their own kids and they talk about the days when we were youth pastors and and these kind of things. And I'm thinking, wow, why, Lord? Wow, that's cool. That, that, that influence, that mattered. What I said, what I did made an impact on their life. Let's pour into the life of others through service. Let's let our families unite together. And, and, and moms, listen, don't, don't take it. Remember that everything that you do matters. Everything. All those little tedious things that you like, does it really matter? It does. And the life that you live will be a legacy. Some of this is about being, having a legacy. Something that people will be able to rise up someday and call you blessed. And today, that's what we do for moms today and grandmas today on this special day. Um, we call you blessed. Yeah. You're blessed. Yeah. And, uh, but that's for all of us as the children of God. How many of you know you're blessed and highly favored? That's what the Word says. I want you to do this with me. Would you bow your heads with me in this moment?